Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D, and today I wanted to share my build for a dedicated rotary engraver using old parts from my Xtool D1 machine. Now, if you had checked out my older videos on how I upgraded my D1 Pro to the 40 watt laser, and then in turn upgraded my original D1 to a Pro machine as well, then you would know that I had a bunch of parts left over for my original D1. So I decided to make a dedicated rotary engraver. As a bonus, I'll also show you a little part I made that allows me to engrave mugs on the RA2 Pro without having to turn it the other way. I even used my Buster Beagle 3D MK3 injection molding machine to make a mold for them in case I need to make a bunch of them. Now, I had a couple of requirements for building this project. Number one, I wanted a full enclosure to keep all of the fumes out and protect my eyes from the laser. Two, I wanted it to be a true desktop machine, so only big enough to fulfill the job I wanted it to function for. And three, I wanted to be able to build it primarily using my D1 Pro as the main tool. So how did it turn out in the end? Where did I mess up along the way? Well, let's find out. So the first thing I did was design a box that could be used for the enclosure. It was a mix of using a website called boxes.py for the starting point of the design, then used a mixture of a bunch of other things, including a 3D program called Maya to flesh out my final design. With all of my pieces fleshed out and imported into Lightburn, I started to cut everything out of 5mm plywood that I got from Home Depot. Everything cut out nice and quick using my 40 watt laser on the D1 Pro. So with all of the pieces cut and ready to go, I started to glue everything together. Just be sure that, if you are making the box, to add the hinge part of the door in first before you glue the box together. This will make your life easier later. Another feature that I wanted to point out are these little tabs on the top of the enclosure. They are there to just help hold the weight of the door when the enclosure is closed. These tabs just glue into place and should help keep that door square and sealed. Next is the window for the door. I purchased some orange acrylic off of Amazon. Now, this doesn't claim to have any laser safety rating on it, it's just orange acrylic, and I also added a one-way mirror film to the back side of it. Again, it has no safety rating on it, but it seems to work really well. I had cut an inside frame out of 3mm MDF since that is what I had lying around, and was the same thickness as the acrylic, and glued that in first. I then placed my acrylic sheet with the mirror film facing inward to the frame. I then topped that off with another piece of MDF to seal the window in. After that, I assembled the rest of the door to the frame and then installed a few cheap latches I bought off of Amazon. They just screwed right into the door and kept everything closed pretty good. The next thing I knew that I wanted to do was to add some lights to the interior of the enclosure. I have used these LED light strips in quite a few of my projects before and still had some roll left over. Now, I could have run a 12 volt power supply into the enclosure separately, but then looking at the controller board for the D1, I saw there was already a 12 volt supply that I could tap into. So that's what I did. I soldered the wires into the control board to access the 12 volts and hooked them up to my lights. No need for a separate power supply. Next, I 3D printed some spacers for the control board and installed it into my enclosure along with the Wi-Fi antenna. This is where I made my first mistake that I'll talk about in a little bit. Next, I installed a fan duct onto the enclosure also bought off of Amazon. Now, this can hold a 120 millimeter fan, but I ended up not installing one only because I have a powerful inline air duct fan that will suck the door closed on this enclosure so the extra fan was not needed. So with the enclosure finished, it's now time for the scary part, modifying the D1 gantry to fit in the smaller enclosure. Now remember when I said that one of my requirements was to make this a true desktop machine? Well, the length of the original gantry was too long for my needs, so I wanted to make it shorter. I also wanted to make sure that I am removing length from the end without the stepper motor. First, I removed the screws holding the belt onto the X-axis plate. 
I then removed the belt tensioner from the end so that I could remove the x-axis plate altogether. I then cut the belt and removed it. Now, I measured my enclosure a million times to make sure I had the correct dimensions to cut the gantry. I took out my hacksaw and went to town on it. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking or why I thought that would actually work, but my hacksaw didn't even make a scratch in that hardened steel rod that the plates roll on. I busted out my 6-inch cutoff saw from Harbor Freight to give it another try. With a lot of sparks and noise, I was able to get the job done. The original part has some threaded holes in the end, so I tapped some new M4 threads in the end of the new cutoff gantry. With that now done, I needed to add a new hole for the belt tensioner. I used the cutoff piece to measure the hole placement, then used a drill, a rotary tool, and some files to create the holes. With that all done, it was time to reassemble the gantry. I added the tensioner back in and cut the belt shorter to reflect the new shorter length of the gantry. On the back of the black piece that holds the belt, there are these little teeth that do a good job of keeping the two halves of the belt attached. I have had no issues with this setup even though the belt is not a complete loop anymore. I now installed the new gantry into the enclosure and screwed everything in. Also be sure to have the laser already on the gantry when you do this as there will not be enough clearance to do this with the gantry installed in the box. It was a nice tight fit and everything lined up perfectly. I installed all the wires, hooked everything up, connected everything to power, and using Wi-Fi was about to test my first job, and nothing worked. I then realized I had made a huge design flaw. Remember that mistake that I was talking about earlier with the control board? Well, I didn't think about the fact that I was changing the orientation of the board to now be 90 degrees from where it was originally mounted. The issue with that is that one of the safety features of the D1 is a tilt sensor that is recorded by the control board itself. With the board on its side, it thinks that the entire machine is on its side. Since the D1 is not open source, there are no parameters that I can alter to fix this in the Gerbil settings. I had to drill new holes in the top of the enclosure and fill up the holes that I had laser cut. Now, also in hindsight, I wish I had installed it in the back right corner to have the controller more out of the way. In the SVGs that I will release, I will place the controller board there with the plug facing to the back of the machine. So now with everything done, I fired up the machine again and this time everything worked perfectly. I now have a small dedicated rotary machine using mostly spare parts for my D1. Now for the bonus of the add-on that you can use for engraving a mug on the RA2 Pro, I designed and 3D printed this attachment that can be used with the chuck so that you can engrave on a mug without having the handle hit the bottom of the rotary. It attaches to the RA2 Pro with the same belt that originally came with the unit. I do this by shifting the chuck over so that the belt reaches the stepper motor. The only other thing that you would need is a longer M4 by 50 bolt that will go through the hole on the chuck and attach to the original hole on the rotary. I also sunk a threaded insert into the other side that will hold the back side of the chuck using the original screw that came with the rotary. I will make some of these available and you can check the video description on where you can pick up one of these with the extra M4 by 50 bolt. I also made a mold for my Buster Beagle 3D injection molding machine in case I have to make a bunch of these. This mold worked pretty good, but I might need to alter my mold design to make it even easier to inject. Many of you who watch my videos might not even know that I designed a DIY injection molding machine, but that's really how this channel started. Feel free to check out my other videos on my channel if you have any interest in that. So that's it. Thanks again for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content having to do with laser engraving, injection molding, 3D printing, and all things Maker. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.